With the brand new live letter out, we have plenty of things to unpack about the future of Final Fantasy XIV and talking about the next 10 years of the game. This live letter was all about the structure and the foundation for the next 10 years and what we will be looking forward to in the roadmap for years to come. There is so much to go over, so let's just jump right into it. We first started off looking at the past 10 years of Final Fantasy XIV, and I can tell you that was truly an experience. To be able to see how far we've come as a community and as a game just truly mind blows me every single time I look at the stats. I hope for many great years of Final Fantasy XIV for all of you for years to come. They kind of covered three main categories here, and that's the advancements of solo and multiplayer RPG experience, the game's first ever graphical update, and a series roadmap for the 6.0 series. They start this off by talking about how Final Fantasy XIV is truly an MMO experience where when you come into game, you are a little bit forced to play with other players and parties when you do dungeon content. One of the ways that they want to alleviate some pressure that new players might feel or that keep them from playing the game altogether is implementing the trust program all the way back to a Realm Reborn main story quest. This means that you are going to be able to run main story content with a group of NPCs instead of queuing for dungeons. They hope that this can alleviate some of that pressure that some players feel and might be able to enjoy the story a little bit more at their own pace. Now this is going to take a long time to implement many many patches in over many months but they are initially going to start with a Realm Reborn in the 6.1 patch. Now they have to do a lot of monitoring because that means they're going to have to change some of the ways that the dungeons work. So they really ask for our understanding on this and for the patience for when it rolls out. They of course won't get rid of regular queuing which I think is a really smart move to be able to add options for players who want to use the trust system or queue. I think this is going to further the game even more and even bring in more players who might have been hesitant on playing at all. Moving on to the first time ever that they've done a graphical update for Final Fantasy XIV. This is planned for implementation in 7.0. Now the one thing they really wanted to hit home here is that this will not be comparable to standalone titles or closed world games. They are not going for photorealism, they are going for an overall general quality upgrade. So for those of you who are asking for the grapes on the barrels to be 4K, you're not going to get that. Because of this, they will be changing the specifications that are needed in order to play. but. It's still okay because they're thinking of making it more optional things that you can choose to turn on and off. As well as they're going to keep PS4 as part of the program so it will not be going away anytime soon. They're going to try to accommodate as broad of a range as hardware specs as possible. Now if I can say they totally got a good one on us because they posted this photo right here where everyone was like, oh my god, this is so amazing, I can't believe the game's gonna look like that. Not only to follow it up with this image right here where they are saying we are absolutely not going for this, so do not expect this in the future. Now, luckily for us and them, they did give us comparable images to look forward to through their testing, and this has only been the first month that they have been testing it. So keep in mind that it will probably get better, and I know that Final Fantasy XIV has never under promise like they always say it's gonna be really bad but then it always comes out really 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 good i think the best one is this picture right here that you can really noticeably see the difference and i think a lot of players are going to be happy they are also going to try to improve higher resolution textures and improved material qualities that means allowing sceneries and metals and fabrics to look better than what they are and add some dynamic to the game they do have some reference photos for this. The first one looking really amazing in the studio, and you can really see the difference that they're going for here. 
The second one looks a little strange because it has a little bit more tinge of red, which actually a lot of players said they were liking, but he said this was a little overdone just to show you an extreme example. As well as this one, they made it look a little bit more gaudy just so then you can kind of see the difference that they're going for for the metal. I think these look great and any more detail and dynamic dimension they can bring to the game, I'm all for. Another thing a part of the map that they wanted to focus on was putting more items in one place. If you notice now in the game a lot of things are perfectly placed in spots and there's not a lot of messiness and they want it to feel like people are actually using the space that the NPCs actually live there. Now from this photo, you can see exactly what they're going for and I'm all for it. The more environmental objects, the better in my personal opinion. And I think it's going to bring an even more immersive feeling to the game. This next one is my absolute favorite thing that they're doing to the game and that's going to be improved plant resolution. I don't know how many times that I have been in a cutscene and watching it and getting into it only for it to be ruined by the horrible plants that auto-generate in the background or take away from the character, I just have no words. So this right here is something that even Yoshi P himself said irritates him about the game. So they wanted to make sure to fix it. Moving on to the 6.1 series roadmap, all of the major updates. Now we don't necessarily know if this is going to drop right on 6.1 or 6.11. They did mention it a little bit in the live letter. So this is just the general 6.1 patch. Of course, new main scenario updates. We are also getting an extension to somehow further Hildebrand adventures, which I know so many people are actually looking forward to. They also did say that we're going to get a new Tataru side quest, which is like she's obviously the ultimate villain of the game. So can't wait for that either. We're going to get our alliance raid, our new PVP crystal conflict, the new tribe quest, which is the changed verbiage that they're going for as they want to veer away from saying beast tribes. So stay tuned for maybe new names for those. A new ultimate duty and Ultima's Bane Unreal. We will be getting new hairstyles for Hrothgard, of course our new Imperium housing, and a special custom deliveries, which is the twins' mother. I absolutely cannot wait for that. I have my maxed out custom deliveries for a long time now, so I am excited to see what that one's going to bring side story-wise. We also have the new housing, which I'm going to create a complete comprehensive housing guide. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so then you can get notified when that drops. Moving on to 6.2, they're going to implement the trust system for the main scenario dungeons and for the Heaven Wards dungeons. We're going to have new weapon enhancements, which I might have missed. I watched the whole thing, but I didn't really gather what that was going to be. Another thing they did say that I forgot to mention was that they're going to include more glamour plates in the 6.1 series roadmap. So rejoice for all those who love to glamour. They are eventually going to also address the glamour system, but glamour plates is up first on the list. We are also getting a new type of dungeon with the code name right now called Criterion Dungeon, which is going to be a variable in difficulty depending if you're on one player or playing with four players. They didn't really give too much information about that, but it is going to be varying degrees. So I'm interested to see if you're playing on harder, if your rewards are going to be better, or what's kind of going to be the purpose of them. We also will get Island Sanctuary in 6.2. So I am super looking forward to that as we all have been anticipating Island Sanctuary for a long time now. But because 6.1 has housing updates and a lot of other things, they just didn't really have enough room in order to do Island Sanctuary at that time. Moving on to 6.3, we're going to get a new Deep Dungeon series. So if you've ever done Palace of the Dead or Heaven on High, we are now going to get a third one, which is kind of exciting. I have not completed those dungeons, so I'm going to have to go back and do those dungeons. We will also be getting the Trust System for Heaven Ward main scenarios, Ultimate Duty number 5, which this is going to be another ultimate duty on top of the other ones and then an island sanctuary update 
as it would have been out by now. So then they want to make some updates depending on how the big debut goes. 6.4 and 6.5 will have all the trust for Stormbloods done at that point. We're going to get another two Criterion dungeons. So the ones that are variable and difficulty, number two and three, which I think is really interesting that they're adding that type of content in and i'm really interested to see how they're going to implement it into the main story or is it going to be side story just so many questions they did also mention that they're going to have an additional area for island sanctuary which at this point really means nothing to us as we have no idea what it's going to be now so i guess just wait and see now they wrap up the live letter saying that because of the insurmountable growth that they've been having that they're having a hard time being able to put out the major patch updates every 3.5 months so now we will be seeing patch updates every four months instead of three and a half which is only about two weeks and ultimately doesn't really make a difference for us but it definitely makes a difference for them I think everything they're doing is absolutely phenomenal. And if you really think about it, they're trying to work forward and backward at the same time. So I can only imagine that they're having a hard time keeping up resources for all of this, especially being during the pandemic and they're not able to get a lot of the things they need in order to expand. Now, this is the general overview. They did say a few other things in the live letters. One of those things being that main story quest is going to change for the level 50 dungeon Praetorium and Castrum, that they will be making it an instance instead of an eight man dungeon. And they will also be making it four man. This is going to be a huge change and I just can't wait to see how they implement that. Honestly, I just can't believe that they're already planning out 10 years. And that means 10 more years of me being able to make content for you guys. I want to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. As if it wasn't for you guys, I would not be able to put out regular content like this and so quickly. If you want to connect with me, you can find my Linktree link down in the description box below where I have my public Discord, my other Stefan Ash live account where I post clips and reactions from my live streams, as well as my Twitch where I actually live stream. Comment down below on some of the things that you did not see coming. And I just really hope that you guys enjoy this journey as much as I do. If you want to watch more Endwalker tutorials and guides, then you can click here.